What's happening? We are back with the Exit Dynamic Character Productions. I am one of the hosts, Alarm Pratt, along with my co-host, McKenna Feeney, and the person doing all the exits this season, Lily. But tonight, we are joined by the sixth place finisher going out on rocks. Jay, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good for uh, for a first boot. <laughs> <laughs> You're never going to let me live that down, are you? Nope. No. Uh, maybe maybe if I play another game and you pick me as a winner pick, then maybe I'll let it go. But not until then. <laughs> yeah, when Lauren okay. called you out as, as first boot, I was like, I don't think that's right. But you do you, Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> you were really confident, too. At, hey, the thing is i always say my predictions prove me wrong and you absolutely did so as the season was going on we were all saying in our little production chat and everything we're like damn jay's kind of kicking some ass Mm -hmm. i was trying i was uh i had a little bit of a tough uh position from the beginning and then had to kind of snake my way through as far as i could go so yeah yeah speaking of that when you switch to dac dac 2.0 and you see all of, you see Steven and then Meredith go, what are you thinking knowing that you're getting closer to a merge? Um, I mean, the biggest thing I was thinking at the tribe swap was what the hell was Steven thinking? Not giving <laughs> us at least one tribe with a majority, uh, or yeah. would, I guess it could have potentially been a tie depending on where Tom mm-hmm. ended up, but uh, that was the biggest thing I was thinking. And then when I realized that wasn't, that we were going to be in the minority, I guess I was thinking that we were probably screwed unless we won and that probably would have been the case but we won so we we're good <laughs> <laughs> and then you get to merge and you're you know you, the numbers are stacked against you and it feels like you're hitting a brick wall with getting people to open up against voting other original deck deck tribes so what is going through your head during all of that um, process i guess the biggest thing was that i knew Garrett was the bigger threat than me. So I was really trying to, I had no choice. I was going against, I I sort of pitched against Garrett and didn't know about the idol. Mm -hmm. So um, that would, that could have been really bad, Uh, but it it ended up working out like in just total sort of randomness. Uh, But I was, I had to pitch after Garrett. That was my only thought. And then I was like, well, then I'll be the only one left. And they'd be crazy not to at least like I was making myself as available as a number as I possibly could to every single person there. So I was like, mm-hmm. someone has to like, these are a bunch of people who play are playing these games, presumably because they're like super fans of Survivor and they want to play the game. And so I'm like, someone's going to have to grab me and use me as a number. And then I can figure out what, you know, where to go from there. Yeah. And it seems like it doesn't happen until they are kind of forced to, they feel like. You know, they don't really have another option, which is not a great playing field for you. <laughs> no, no, not at all. They uh, they were a lot more like tight knit than I would have thought. But I guess part of that has to do with not having to vote really anyone out. And so they spent a lot of time together just kind of chit chatting and not uh, having to, you know, show where their where they were their allegiances were. In this game, to me, you kind of felt like one of those characters of like yeah we'll get out all the other people from your tribe and then we'll use you to eat members of our own but then somehow you wind up in that final spot and like how did that happen so if only rocks hadn't cut your game (laughs) short I think it might have been a strong chance that we could see you in that final yeah, I genuinely think I had a shot if rocks didn't go the way they did because um, I guess it, it depends, but I had sh- I had potential shields in front of me. I felt extraordinarily confident in uh, my ability at a, at a final challenge because I sort of did, I'm, I'm a planner, and so I did a lot of research before the uh, <laughs> game. And so I had heard uh, some comment in one of your previous seasons where it was like Lauren likes endurance challenges for the final challenge and so I was just assuming it was going to be that and I don't know I have a mountain in my backyard like I climb mountains all the time and go snowshoeing and all that stuff and we've had our little group chat some people don't they, some other people think they might have won but I feel I felt and I still feel pretty confident that that would have been mine so nice. I could have gotten to that final sort of 
position and there was an endurance challenge, I thought I, I was going to make it to the final. So I know a little bit about your behind the scenes of the game. We've chatted extensively about it, but I want everyone else to know, can you explain your whole drinking situation that you're doing throughout the game? Yes. Uh, I mean, it, it totally didn't pan out in any way whatsoever, but I, I sort of had this strategy coming in. I had never, I didn't really know anything about orgs. I didn't even know what that, what it was when I applied initially. Um, and I guess I, I was like trying to think of little things I could do to give myself an advantage. And so I was thinking like it would potentially help my game if, if people saw me drinking a lot, because early in the game, I wouldn't be that intoxicated. But later in the game, when it was an individual game, if I was still around, then people might think like, oh, he may have done OK in challenges when it had to do with the team. But now he's drunk and he's not going to do as well as he would have. So I had if people were watching, I had two different color beer cans and I can't remember which was which but one of them was filled with water and I was drinking water <laughs> out of the beer can the whole time uh, but that whole strategy was thwarted when Garrett was just pounding him just as quick as I could with the water I couldn't even keep up with the water compared to him and uh, he was doing just fine so it, it never <laughs> came to play it uh, in the game but yeah that was a I don't know a little harebrained scheme I came up with coming into the game <laughs> that's Not a fun a little one. game yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty clever actually I would never think of something like that yeah I was I was throwing anything at the wall to see what might stick because I, I had no clue as you guys sort of figured out from my uh it, like uh, application I kind of changed my strategy completely as I actually started doing research into these things and saw what worked and what wouldn't work so and it, it worked up until rocks. Yeah. Always rock, rocks have a tendency to get out some of the best players that aren't on the radar. And it seemed that that's kind of what happened to you two here. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm not thrilled with it, but that's part of the game. And, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it is what it is. I'm fine with it. I'm, I'm part of a, a elite group of uh, people who have gone out on rocks in your game. Yeah, I mean, we. I want to say it's like this private like hard to get into group but for some reason in every season of our org we have people either a person or multiple people go out in a season via rock i just it's crazy yeah i'm sure part of it is that you guys don't do the revote because uh, based on my gameplay i'm sure it's no surprise that i definitely would have flipped my vote with a revote uh, <laughs> but and I'm sure other people potentially would have in, in other games. But uh, like I said, the, you know, we sort of knew the rules of the game going into it. And that's uh, you play with the rules that you got. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you hear like even at even votes, even at the one where you go out, the mention of, well, there's even so it could go to rocks. But it seems like no one ever gets to that point where they say, oh, OK, like <laughs> I'm not going for rocks. You know what I mean? Like I let's figure out a plan and you're right if there was a chance to revote you'd be able to set up a second second excuse me um strategy but you just don't get that here yep exactly you got to make the right choice right away and then in particular when you have a round where you're not allowed to scramble um uh, it makes it hard to sometimes suss out those you know where there might be a tie yeah, yeah. in speaking of that when you are in the room and, you know, um, I have it written down who threw out. Garrett throws out Bill's name and um, Brett throws out Garrett. And you kind of throw out this like, I'm gonna do what I said last round. And everyone's yeah. kind of like, what is, even the people that were in the talk with you were like, I, what is he saying? You know what I mean? <laughs> I know, I was way too coy. That was a big mistake, I think. I think potentially, and I don't I don't know, um, we'll have to ask her, but. I was assuming that it that Celestina was going to vote with us. I was thinking Garrett, uh, Jay, me, and Celestina would all vote together. Um, and if I had been less coy about it, and if I had just been more direct, and in particular, I think if I had played on uh, Celestina's emotions, because I know she was a very you know empathetic player, um, I my hope is, or what would have been that I could have convinced her and I could have gotten her to vote with us. And so that was... You know, I, that's what I was assuming was going to happen. And I shouldn't have been so coy. Um, I should have definitely been more, more direct at that point. But I was kind of, it's a quick game and you get stuck. Like that's how I was playing up until that point. And it was time to pivot. And I think, you know, I just didn't recognize that that was the time to pivot. 
Mm-hmm. And there's, it's a really hard balance of staying enough in the background to make it to the end, but you were doing a great job of, you were doing a great job of, you were getting in that connection with Celestina and J, JM and Garrett, but yeah, you can't like put yourself out there too early or you end up like Garrett where you're always on the chopping block. Yeah, although well, Garrett made it longer than me. So, you know, I guess, I guess it can work for some people. Hey, he has that idol. So, <laughs> so if um, Bill had gone home, what would have been like, let's talk through perfect game for you. Who goes next sort of um, on the pecking order? Yeah, if, if Bill goes home, then it's almost certainly because Celestina voted with us. Um, mm-hmm. So next uh, Brett goes, then it's final four. And it was just based on the math, it was probably going to be a final two, but I guess you never know for sure. Um, but at that point, it's time to start looking at getting w- how and when to get Garrett out. Um, so I, I could have taken Garrett out at either four or three, depending on the situation, but I felt really comfortable keeping Garrett as long as possible, because like I'd mentioned before, I felt I was going to win uh, a final endurance challenge if there was one. So I was like, I can take Garrett with me all the way uh, and just get rid of Garrett at the final chance, you know, that that final round when I'm in my mind, at least going to win immunity and get to make a, make that choice. So that was kind of my thought was uh, a final three of either uh, would be final three would be me, Jay and Celestina final two probably would have been me and Jay, but I don't know. You know, again, I, it, it depends on... Battle of the Jays. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Make sure you write and get confusing. <laughs> That's interesting because we I do um, remember watching and you talk, when you're talking to Jay, you're like, it'll be a battle out a two versus two when we get to the final four and I'm like I hope that's not his real plan because Garrett <laughs> yeah, you know no, has a shot definitely not it that was not my yeah. real plan. that was a good plan to pitch to Jay at the time yeah that makes sense because then he thinks he can pull you in as an option along with Celestina yeah, yeah. exactly very smart uh one thing I do want to circle back to is though you talk about throwing challenges throughout this game. Yes. And that coming from someone who is not a challenge beast, I didn't win one. Throwing a challenge. Yes, you did. The final like, one. You won it. <laughs> <laughs> but throwing a challenge is like blasphemy, right? You're, you're always worried if someone catches on or that, you know, you get voted out because you throw the challenge. Why do you think that's the best way to go? And did you ever second guess that strategy? Um, That probably, actually, it almost certainly would not have been my strategy if I wasn't playing so severely from the bottom. But I sort of knew that I didn't have a lot of, I didn't have uh, that big of a path to get to the end at at the points where I was kind of throwing challenges. And so I really needed to make Garrett a shield. And so I wanted to make it look like Garrett was a better like would, would be better in competitions than me mm-hmm. and I was even pitching that early very early on uh when I was in rooms that Garrett wasn't in saying like Garrett was in a fraternity a lot of these games are similar to the kind of games you <laughs> play in a fraternity you know you want to you know just just you know keep that in mind I don't I haven't I'm a little bit older I haven't played those games in a very long time I'm not that good at those kind of thing. <laughs> So it was really just a threat management thing. Like I didn't, I, I felt like I could win a lot of these challenges, but I didn't want anyone to know that because my only sort of path that I had to the end was to play under the radar and make people feel like they could get me out later mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. And it speaking does kind of, of challenges, oh, I was go just going to say, speaking <laughs> of challenges, what was your favorite one that you got to participate in? I know one of them, you only got to take one shot. So that can't be your favorite challenge. So please choose something other than that one. Yeah, I guess. I mean, the easy choice is to say the one that I won. That was a, that was a good <laughs> one. Um, but I, I like endurance challenges. And so I liked the uh, holding the bottle out in front of me uh, challenge. I think realistically for my game, especially the game I was playing, I sort of should have thrown it even sooner than I did. But uh, I have a long history with some of my friends who I knew would be watching and talking about how 
I would go, you know, if I were ever in an endurance challenge, I would make sure I was, I wouldn't give up until like I absolutely had to. So I sort of, I don't know, my ego was a little bit involved and I felt like I had to at least get far enough where I could say, see, I, I could have done it if I wanted to, but I didn't. <laughs> Do you consider yourself competitive? Jay? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty competitive. I'm, I'm lower key competitive. So I, you know, I'm good at hiding the fact that I'm competitive because I feel like sometimes that can like rub people the wrong way, especially in games like this, where they think like, oh, if you, this person's really trying hard. And so I was trying to play it down and not come off as super competitive, but I definitely do have that, <laughs> that side to me. Yeah. <laughs> um, a question that we ask a lot in exit interviews is if you could take someone from this cast and either play in a different org or a real survivor, who would you pick and why? Um, I guess I, I could go at it a few ways. I've played another game since this game with uh, JM, and that was a good time. Um, I'd be interested in playing with Garrett again. I think that would be interesting. Um, but I, it, I think the number one person I would be most interested in playing with again is actually Meredith. I think I didn't get enough mm. time to really play with her. And I think she and I, you know, connected a decent amount and had similar um, – thoughts on the game and I think it'd be interesting to play a game with Meredith for sure nice I think that's a really good answer because you guys could divide and conquer exactly yeah we're yeah. we're we, have, we think about things similarly or at least it seemed like we did but she and I would probably not be like obviously working together like mm -hmm. I think it would be a surprise to some people if we were working together mm -hmm. yeah I think that's a really good pick um I did have written down that it seemed like Brett was catching on to your game when Vinny got voted out when they left. Um, but it doesn't really seem like anyone else is aware of this. Did you think that it would start catching on longer? Did you think anybody was kind of catching on at that point? Because Brett says it in a confessional, but he doesn't really say it out loud to anyone. So even when you go out with rocks, your name isn't really ever being thrown around. Why do you think? Yeah. Um, I think I, I think I to be to answer the initial part of the question. No, I didn't really think anyone was catching on to me. Brett was. Uh, I didn't see a lot of Brett's game. Brett and I were on different tribes until the merge, and then as a result, I was really focused on um, cultivating the relationships with the sort of people who I was in that uh, Dak Dak 2.0 um, group with. So. I didn't see a lot of Brett's game. And I, so I'm surprised that Brett picked up on it because we just, I, I didn't see much of his game. So I guess I sort of assumed he didn't see much of my game either. Um, but he does seem like from confessionals and watching the season back that he was really the only one. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I was, I was surprised, but I, I that was, I, I, that was my only way to get to the end, I think was to kind of play it down. So uh, I'm glad that most other people didn't <laughs> see it. Yeah. I could see you and Brett going really far, like playing um, good cop, bad cop. Like Brett would come in and be like, so, and throw out the hard questions. And you could come in and be like, well, let's like talk about it. <laughs> would I would love to see that. Yeah, yeah no, that would be interesting. Like I said, I didn't really play much with Brett and I didn't really see, you know, get to see his game. So I think it, it would be interesting to, to have that dynamic and to play with Brett again. Yeah, I think that would be a good duo for sure. Yeah. I mean, that's, I think we covered most of my questions. I just have one more yeah. if you want to switch to Facebook. All right. Well, you left a comment for yourself saying, why are you so <laughs> awesome? So if you could elaborate for the viewing audience, why you are so awesome, that would be great. I, I to be honest, I don't even know why I'm so awesome. I guess <laughs> I was just born this way. Uh, oh. No, I, I, I was just messing around, but uh, yeah. All right, so Steven has a few questions. Jay, if you were swapped as the same tribe as me, would you have written my name down? It depends on how the swap worked. If Steven did the swap the way that I felt like Steven should do the swap, um, I would have not written Steven's name down. We would have had the majority and I would have tried, um, I would have picked off at least, depend, you know, it depends on what you win and what you lose, but I would have picked off at least one original deck deck and then we, we could have gone from there kind of thing. But no, mm -hmm. my, my plan wouldn't have been to, at first to pick off Steven. If I was in a situation where it was just me and Steven, 
uh, then just like I had to do with Garrett, I definitely would have just said like, let's get rid of Steven. Like I'm totally on your side. I'm a vote for you guys. Tell me what you want to do. Like if, if yeah. you don't want Steven, we could do someone else, but I would have just been flexible there. Mm -hmm. uh, I like Steven. There's nothing against, it, but that was, that was my, you know, I was trying to get further in the game at that point. Yeah. And then he just says that it sucks to see another WOTA member go. And he asked about your end game plans and your favorite challenge, which we covered already. We now have one from Celestina. Jay, such a pleasure working with you. My question is this. If you knew we had the potential to go to rocks and everyone would likely be voting Garrett, why did you vote Bill? So now you can answer directly to Celestina why yeah. you thought Bill was the answer. Because I thought you were voting with me, Celestina. I had no idea. I did not know. I, if I knew, then I would have considered voting Garrett. Now, I, to be honest, I think that was going to be a lot harder for my game with it, with that structure moving forward. Um, Cause I think it, there's a very, very good chance I'm the next one picked off at that point And I have to win a lot more to move forward. Mm -hmm. So I think it's better for my game for Bill to go, but to be honest, I did, I, I was really banking on Celestina voting with us and I should have been far more direct about that. It may <laughs> not have made a difference, but um, it also could have made a difference. It was kind of my shot to move forward. So, yeah. Um, now, JM, my beloved partner in crime, my Bob Marley Alliance, and one of my best friends, Jay, I also appreciate you so much. Although I don't want to get into detail on air, you know what I mean. I love and appreciate our long talks, your advice, and just life wisdom you give me every day. Love you lots, my friend. I'll ask one question more. Had you noticed I was on the bottom of original Dak Dak? Would you have worked me earlier to make a move um so i didn't know for sure that jay was at the bottom although i had suspicions that that might be the case because people did mention that jay was the potential first boot for that side um i would have to some extent yes but it's the i think that's the kind of thing i would have been able to do in a long game but <laughs> in these games like it's it's you're you have to bounce from room to room and i didn't there was literally the when we made the Bob Marley alliance was the only time the two of us were in a room together, just the two of us. So yeah. like there's not a chance a lot of times to do that. So I what I was doing was trying to build and cultivate relationships with everyone uh, that was in Dak Dak 2.0. Mm -hmm. And so I think to some extent I did that. And I don't think there was any capacity for me to do it any more than I did, you know, regardless of what knowledge I had or didn't have. Uh, but if I, if it was a long game or if there was, a, if we had gotten in a room, just the two of us. Yeah. I mean, I definitely would. Uh, Speaking of a long game. Whoa, we have an application <laughs> out. You guys should apply to our long game. It will be season two of the long game. Monte Carlo, Lauren, Lily, you have both participated in our first long game. Did you guys have so much fun? So much. Always. It was <laughs> great. So you I loved being the around. villain. It was fun. <laughs> apply, apply, apply. Applications close January 3rd, and you won't regret it. It's a blast. Now continuing on to the Facebook question. <laughs> <laughs> um, so your last one is from Garrett. JS, my dude, love playing this game with you. This season, it was heartbreaking to see the wheel claim you as its victim. What would have been your plan moving forward if the wheel had took JM instead? What if? What about if it took Brett? Oh. So let's see. It, Brett's the easy one. If it took Brett, that was great for my game, I think, because I think we can get out Bill next. Uh, assuming I can get JM and Celestina on board with that. If not, we can take out Garrett, but I, I would prefer to take out Bill first. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, you know, I, Garrett and then one of the other two um, and take JM to, to the final two probably. Um, with, if let's see, if JM went out, then that's not a great structure for me. And probably, I depending on what the, I, I have to continue my strategy of, uh, blowing with the wind and I, that probably means voting out Garrett next mm -hmm. uh, which then leaves Bill Brett 
uh, Celestina and I, and if I can get some traction with Celestina, then maybe we can do something, but probably I have to win out at that point. Yeah, I mean, final three, then the endurance challenge is right there and you're good. So right. I think I think you have a possibility to move forward, but yeah, Brett is definitely your... your yeah, that would have been perfect. <laughs> if, if it landed on Brett, I, I don't want to be arrogant about it, but I think I could have had the game if, if it had landed on Brett. Heard it mm-hmm. here first, folks. <laughs> <laughs> that is well, see, that's, we didn't have an hourglass on the season, so you couldn't smash it and then <laughs> write history. So apologies on our end for not having that twist. We didn't think it up first. So. <laughs> well, that's the last of our Facebook questions. So to round it out, we always like to ask, Jay, if you could sum up your game in one word, what would it be and why? All right. So... Um, if, if I could sum it up in one phrase, I would say under the radar, but I can't, it's only one word. So <laughs> I, I think you can I use a hyphen, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, but I think I would say, um, like sneaky, I guess mm-hmm. I, I, my game was at, it, after we got to the point where I was put in a position where I was very much part of a, a very small group and an underdog, it was blow with the wind hide under hide under whatever I can use any shield I possibly can and uh, kind of like uh, Sandra said from uh, the main survivor as long as it's not me so I, yeah. I think I would say sneaky if I have to pick a single one I think that's a good one yeah Jay we are super glad to have you on the season you're a delight I hope that we see you on a future season at some point But with that, everyone, be sure to check out all the content that we have going on here at Dynamic Character Productions. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel and, you know, wait and see what's going to happen with this crazy finish of this season, because let me tell you, it is a good one. So stay tuned. Again, Jay, thank you so much. McKenna, as always. Lily, you are fantastic. Take it easy. Bye-bye.